Okay, question number 13. Here is the formula, s is equal to 5t squared. Um, s is the distance in meters the ball falls when dropped. t is the time taken in seconds. A ball is dropped from two meters above the floor. We need to work out the time taken for the ball to hit the floor. So two meters is now going to be s because that's how much it's fallen. So we can replace the s with the t with the two, sorry, and that's going to be equal to five t squared. So that tells me that t squared is going to be equal to two divided by five, which is zero point four. So t squared must be equal to zero point four and therefore t is going to be equal to the square root of 0 0.4. Now I don't need to put a plus and minus in here because I only need the positive version of this because we're talking about time and we can't have a negative time. So now using my calculator, I can say the square root of 0 0.4 and that gives me 0 0.632 seconds. Let's put in 0 0.632 seconds. Okay, and then for part B, we need to decide which of the statements is true for the ball. It falls two meters in exactly double the time it falls the first meter, or in less than double the time it falls the first meter, or more than double the time it falls the first meter. So we need to show working out to support our answer. So let's um, first of all work out how long it takes to fall that first meter. So to fall one meter, S is going to be one. So I'm gonna do my working out over here. We've got one is equal to five T squared. I've just replaced the S with one for the first meter. So that tells me that T squared must be equal to one divided by five, which is a fifth or 0 0.2 and then t is going to be equal to the positive square root of 0 0.2. So we've got the square root of 0 0.2 and that is 0 0.447. So t is equal to 0 0.447 seconds. Okay, so we need to decide which of these statements is true. Um, so we need to know what double the time of it falling the first meter it so I need to work out two times this time over here so um, let's do 0 0.447 times by 2 and that gives me 0 0.894 so that's 0 0.894 seconds Okay, so that's double the time it falls the first meter. And we can see that the actual time is less than double the time it takes to fall the first meter. So 0 0.632 is less than 0 0.894. So therefore, it falls two meters in less than double the time it takes to fall the first meter. Okay, because that's less than double the time. Okay, question number 14. There are, we've got two shapes here that are similar to each other and we need to work out the value of x over here. So because they're similar, there must be a scale factor of enlargement. So what do I multiply the length of this one by to get the length of this one? Well, I know the two corresponding ones, that's eight and that's 12. So if I do 12 divided by eight, that gives me 1.5. So this must be 1.5 times bigger than that one. So I do times by 1.5. And that, I did that by doing 12 divided by eight. Okay, so we wanna work out the value of x. So to work out x, I need to do six times 1.5. And that's gonna tell me what x is. So x is equal to six times 1.5. And that's going to give me um, 6 times 1.5 which is 9 so my answer is x is equal to 9 centimeters okay question number 15 um, y is equal to 10 divided by x squared what happens to the value of y as the value of x doubles so um, if I double the value of x then x squared is going to be 
four times as big. So if I do 10 divided by something that's four times as big, then the y is going to be divided by four. So it's going to be that one there. Okay, question 16. A tank is filled with water at a constant rate. The tank is a cuboid of height 80 centimeters. The tank is full after 15 minutes. And Sita draws this graph to show the depth of the water during the 15 minutes. And we need to make two criticisms of Sita's graph. Okay, so the first criticism I'm spotting is that we're told that the time is in minutes but we haven't got a unit for depth. So my criticism one is going to be no unit given for depth. Okay, now my second criticism is going to be um, that the depth of the tank um, is going to increase at a constant rate. Whereas the depth on this graph doesn't show that it's increasing at a constant rate because it's a curve rather than a line. So my criticism too is that the um, sh that it should be a straight line as increasing at a constant rate. Okay, so those are the two um, criticisms. Okay, question 17. Some girls and boys take an examination. Here is some information about the marks for the girls. So we're given the lowest and the highest value the lower and the upper quartile and the median and we're going to use this to draw a box plot for this information. Okay, so I'm going to start by um, let's start by drawing in um, some lines that represent each of these things. So the lowest is 16 so we've got 10, 12, 14, 16 so I'm going to draw a line up from here at 16 the highest is 78, so that's going to be over here. And then we've got the lower quartile at 24, which is going to go there. And the upper quartile is 66, 2, 4, 6, and that's going to go there. And then finally we've got the median at 48, and we want to be as accurate as we can. That's going to go there. Okay, so um, we're now going to draw the box plot. So in order to draw the box plot, I'm going to link together my lower quartile and my upper quartile to form a box. And then I'm going to link together my upper quartile to the highest value in the middle there. To, and then the same for the lower quartile to the lowest value and that's going to give me my whiskers and then we've got this double sided syringe thing um, and that's our box and whisker diagram or our box plot. Okay question 17b here is some information about the marks for the boys the median is 45 and the interquartile range is 39 and we need to decide whose marks were more consistent okay so we're not comparing together the averages here we're comparing together the, well, it has to be the interquartile range because I have that information for both of them. So the interquartile range for the boys is 39. And then the interquartile range for the girls, oops. Well, that's going to be the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile, which is 66 take away 24, and that's going to give me 42. So whose marks were more consistent? Well, the smaller the interquartile range, 
the more consistent the marks are going to be because the, they'll, they'll be less spread out. So it's the boys that have the lower interquartile range, so they are going to be more consistent. So I'm going to tick the boys.